painting black should be a fairly simple task. But it's often hard to get things like shading looking right. If your highlights aren't right, the model can look flat or cartoonish, and if you're using a pure black as your base layer, it's very difficult to shade it because washes or even blacker blacks just won't work. Now, I'm Pete the Wall Gamer, and today I'll be showing you how to paint black. Well, black templars to be specific, but the techniques I'll be applying to the armor and sword can easily be transferable to other models, such as Raven Guard or Raven Wing. The model I'm painting here is my Black Templar Empress conversion. If you haven't done so already, check out my conversion guide for how I went about building this miniature, and you'll find that in the description below. You can also see that I kept the components separate and had attached small lengths of wire to them in order to get a better grip of them as I'm painting. After I had prepped the components, I needed to prime the model. Priming is the important first step in the painting process. It creates a surface that will hold the paint you're applying and prevent it from pooling up or being easily rubbed away. It also gives you an opportunity to quickly apply your first color, which in my case is quite unsurprisingly, given the title of this video, black. I'm using a black airbrush primer for this and how you apply your primer is entirely up to you. There are aerosols and brush on alternatives, so if you have those, feel free to use them. Just make sure that the color you use is black. After I had primed, I needed to give the surface of the armor a layer of paint that was lighter than black, as using pure black would mean I wouldn't be able to shade it. I opted to use Vallejo's Black Grey. It's probably among my favorite paints and is an extremely dark gray color. Similar paints include the Army Painter's Necromancer Cloak and Games Workshop's Corvus Black. I thinned down this paint with a little airbrush thinner to give me a little more control over how it could be applied. Using a thinner mixture like this allowed me to apply several layers to create gradients and is a technique that I repeated across the whole model. With this thin mixture, I could begin painting the black armor of my Templar. I applied the paint so that it was mainly focused on areas that you could see when you viewed the model from above. These are the areas that light would fall onto and so they should appear lighter. These areas included, but were not limited to, tops of the helmet, knee pad, foot, backpack, gorget, and chest. I kept the recesses and the areas that were not visible from above as the pure black primer, which would start to form our shadows. After the first layer of paint had dried, I applied a second layer over that first one. However, I slightly reduced the area that I covered on the second pass, which resulted in the start of a gradient from the pure black to thinned black gray, and then to pure black gray. Now that I had my first layer down, I could begin applying some highlights. To create a lighter paint for these, I took some of the black gray that I used in the previous step and mixed in some of AK Interactive's pastel yellow in two parts gray to one part yellow. Alternatives for pastel yellow are Games Workshop's Dawn Yellow, Army Painter's Arid Earth, or Vallejo's Ice Yellow. By using this pale yellow, I was able to lighten the black gray paint as well as adding a little warmth to the shade too. This will be important later on. In the same way that I thinned the black gray, I added a little airbrush thinner to this mixture too, and focused the application to both the edges of the armor and some of the panels. Again, I followed the principle of applying the paint to the upper areas where the light is more likely to touch. By further reducing the area I painted over in the next steps, I was able to maintain that gradient that I started in the last step. Next, I added a little more pastel yellow to my previous mixture, creating a one-to-one -one mixture of black gray and pastel yellow. This lighter gray was used to pick out the sharp corners and edges towards the top of the model. By adding small dots of lighter gray to the armor, I was able to improve the prominence of certain details. With the armor finished, I could start to work on the coat. Following the same process for the armor, I began with a thin layer of Vallejo's chocolate brown, mixed with some black gray in roughly equal parts. This mixture covered most of the coat apart from the deepest recesses. After this, my second coat covered a smaller area than before and instead focused just on the raised folds. Next came pure chocolate brown, which against the darker mixture, this will create a lighter shade of brown. Again, this was used to highlight the edges and the more prominent folds of the cloth. 
To finish off the coat, I added some pastel yellow to create a two to one mixture of chocolate brown and pastel yellow. However, with this paint, I instead applied a small series of thin parallel lines to the folds and edges that I tackled in the last step. These lines would build up to create the appearance of a worn fabric. Adding extra details like this during your painting really helps to break up large flat areas such as this. The next areas to paint were the leather gloves and pouches. Now I was approaching this in the same way as before, but this time I wanted a slightly different hue to help differentiate against the coat. Therefore, I opted to use some red hued flat brown instead of the chocolate brown. But apart from the paint, the steps were the exact same. I started with a couple of thin layers of the flat brown that was mixed in with some black gray. This was followed by some highlights created by adding a little pastel yellow to the previous mixture. Before finishing off by adding a little more pastel yellow to the mixture and then using it to create some small parallel lines to give the leather a worn appearance. Now that the various fabrics had been completed, I turned my attention to the shoulder pad. I wanted to create an off-white for the inner area of the shoulder and so I started off with some of AK Interactive's Vampiric Flesh, although Rakar Flesh from Games Workshop would have been a good alternative. As I was painting over a black base coat, it was applied in a thinned mixture first, then allowed to dry, and a second layer was then applied over the top to achieve a solid starting colour that I could build up on in the next step. If I hadn't covered quite perfectly this time around, you could just keep adding layers until you got some good coverage. I was then able to use three layers of thinned off-white, also from AK Interactive, on the shoulder pad. The first layer was applied to about halfway down the shoulder pad, the second stopped a little further up, and the final layer was applied to only the very top of the pad. This created a transitional effect, much like those that we achieved in the previous steps for the armor and the cloth. I also use this paint to paint the Maltese cross on the small shield. Now normally my freehand work is pretty poor, but I tried a fairly simple technique to get the cross looking right. I started by painting on a small central dot. Next, I painted two small dots above the first one, and then to either side of it, and then below it. The result will be nine dots. I then joined each of the outer dots to the center dot with a straight line. After this, the structure of the cross was starting to become visible. I then joined up each of the pair of lines that made up each of the cross's arms with a small V shape, and then filled in the remaining area between the lines to create our solid cross. In addition to the cross, I also used this paint to apply some small staggered lines across a few areas of the black armor to represent some inscribed text. In the exact same way that I applied the Maltese cross to the smaller shield, I then used that same dot and line technique to paint a larger cross to the left shoulder using some black gray. In addition to this, I also used the paint to apply some small thin lines of text to the bottom of the pad too. With the symbols painted, I could then begin my base coat of the parchment of the purity seals. These were coated with some Vallejo's US Field Drab, which gave me a good starting color for that aged and yellowed parchment. Following the parchment's base coat, I applied some thin horizontal lines of vampiric flesh across the surface of the parchment. By leaving some of the darker Field Drab visible in places, I was able to give the impression of folds and creases in the parchment paper which only helped to enhance the weathered and aged effect. The red areas of the model were the next areas to tackle. These included the lenses in the helmet, the wax of the purity seal and the leather handle of the sword. All of these areas were painted with the same paints and I started by creating a dark red mixture using AK's Dirty Red mixed with some black grey in a 2 to 1 ratio. This was applied as an all-over base coat that would allow me to contrast it against my lighter reds later on. Using some pure dirty red this time, I began to pick out the raised details of the parts I painted in the last step. For the lenses in the helmet, I applied a horizontal line at the bottom of the lens, keeping the darker mixture visible at the top. Finally, a small dot of just pastel yellow was added to the lens to create a small point of light reflection. With most of the model completed, I turned my attention to the metallics. I began by creating a dulled gold color and this was achieved by mixing some of the Army Painter's True Copper with their gun metal in equal quantities. 
The result is this subdued gold colour that's not quite as intense as using pure gold, provided by Games Workshop or the Army Painter. This paint was then applied over the various adornments of the model, such as the chains, reliquies, and the sword's crossguard and pommel. I was particularly careful with this step because I didn't want to accidentally overspill onto the parts of the model that I had already painted. However, apart from the chain across the coat, most of these areas were quite easy to reach. I wanted to give the metallic areas a little more definition, and the easiest way to do this was with a wash of Agrax Earthshade. I did thin the wash just a tiny amount to make sure I didn't apply it too thickly. After all, you can easily apply a little more, but removing what you've already added is much, much harder. Once this wash had dried, it had shaded the recesses of these areas and helped to remove some of the flatness by creating the appearance of shadows. I rounded off the painting of my gold areas by mixing together some more true copper with gun metal. This time, I used two parts gunmetal to one part true copper to create a more silvery mixture. This was then applied as an edge highlight to the raised details of the gold areas. Continuing with the metallics, I next began to use some of Games Workshop's Iron Warriors to cover the areas of steel. This application was mostly limited to the vents of the power pack, but I also applied it over the coats buttons as well. This dark silvery colour of the paint is the perfect base colour for metal if you're looking for a darker scheme like the one I'm creating here. I finished off the silver areas with a thin line of the Army Painter's Shining Silver being used as an edge highlight. The only remaining area that I had to paint was the Black Sword. I wanted this to be, as the name suggests, black, but it needed to still stand out against the black armour, so I decided to use blue as a highlight. This will give the black a slightly cooler colour, which would contrast nicely against the warmer hues on the rest of the model. The colour I've chosen was AK's Ocean Blue, which is a really nice greyish dark blue colour that I thinned out on my palette. Using a thin brush, I then started to pick out the edges of the blade. I decided to keep the main colour as being the pure black that we primed in, so if you've overspilled onto the primer, then you'd probably want to reapply some black before you tackle this step. It's becoming a bit of a catchphrase at this point, but I broke out the pastel yellow once again and mixed it into the ocean blue, in a mixture of two parts blue to one part yellow. This created a lighter grey blue that I used to highlight three points of the blade's edges. The tip, about three quarters up the blade, and then about a quarter of the way up the blade. I kept my application to just the edges, creating the appearance of two bands of lighter paint and then a lighter tip. I then added a little more pastel yellow to my mixture and added a small dot to the centre of each of these bands to help to emphasise them. Finally, the flats of the blade were cleaned up with some pure black once again. I used this to clean up any small mistakes I made during the highlighting step. And with that, the model only needed to be reassembled, based and given a coat of matte varnish. And here we have the fully assembled Black Templar Empress Champion. If you're interested in how I converted this model, you'll find a link to how I built it in the description below. Now, one of the things that I've always struggled with in painting Black Templars is making it so that the model doesn't look flat and bland, even though you're using a lot of dark colours. I think the reliance of a black grey here really helped to avoid this, as I was able to apply shading with a pure black. Now, this kind of in-depth guide might not be suitable for your rank and file Black Templars, and is more something you would apply to your army leader. However, I do hope that it's given you a few ideas that you could apply to your models. So, I just want to finish off with a big thank you to all of my Patreon supporters and the folks who use my affiliates links. Your help is always greatly appreciated. If you like this video, then check out my other conversion guides and please do consider subscribing. And with all that, the only thing left to say is thanks for watching and goodbye.